Okay, hello, it's Saturday, it's December 4th, and yet again, we gotta call out New York 1, because I, I just can't believe I have to do this on a Saturday, but there's a lot of crime going on as usual, and last night, there was an awful shooting that happened in Harlem on the 4-5 line, 125th Street, Lexington Avenue, and... Uh, do you think New York one would cover it? No, not at all. I mean, they do have Eric Adams. They have his picture on the on the uh, screen. You know, this TV station again. They're so full of it. They are so full of it. But I will give them credit. At least they spent two minutes last night covering the uh, covering the vigil that for the student that was um from Columbia University. You can see it right here. I'll uh, move it to the right so you can see how long they spent. I'm not going to play the video, but um, there are more details about the suspect charged, and we'll get into that later on in this video, but we need to get to the urgent stuff. And as you can see here, we're going to go to a meaningful website that actually covers the crime. And that is, of course, AM New York Metro. Yeah, we're gonna we're 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 gonna we're gonna read from this website, okay? Cause they actually had it on the home page. They actually had it on the home page, okay? Let's read this. Why is this in the villager? Oh, maybe because um the four or five runs in the east village. That's why. Okay, that would make sense. Two men shot on the Ford train in East Harlem following a dispute. So let's read this. Two men were shot and injured on the Ford train in East Harlem early Saturday morning, moments after they were involved in a dispute with the gunmen. Detectives are continuing to search for the suspect who pulled the trigger on the victims at the 125th Street station below Lexington Avenue just about 12.13 a.m. earlier this morning. Moments earlier, according to law enforcement sources, the two men, ages unknown, had been arguing with the suspect on the platform while waiting for a downtown-bound train. After the train arrived, authorities said the two men boarded the train and the suspect followed them. Seconds later, the perpetrator pulled out a gun and blasted a number of rounds at them, then ran off, at, then ran off the train and fled in an unknown direction. Oh, lovely, and I gotta take the 4-5 from Grand Central next week. Lovely. Officers from the 25th Precinct and the Transit Bureau are looking into the shooting. One of the victims sustained gunshot wounds to his right leg and both arms, while the other man took a bullet to his stomach. EMS brought victims to local hospitals for treatment. So far, they have been uncooperative with detectives investigating the shooting. No arrests have been made in the ongoing investigation. So, suspects on the run, you know, that is, uh, disturbing, again, that nobody does anything. They're just scared. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't because I'd be scared for my life, but still, nobody else? I mean, give me a break. You know, New York One, I'm calling you out again, all right? You should have had a reporter sent over this, all right? Let, let, let's go to CBS New York's YouTube page. Let's Google it. Let's go here. Thankfully, I know how to go on YouTube and find their page. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Look at this. Look at this. Two minutes! Now, Channel 2 spent two minutes covering it this morning. Shot on board a subway train in Harlem. It happened just after midnight on the four train. CBS I'm very surprised CBS 2 actually has a morning CBS. newscast on a weekend. Well, good morning, Cindy. The shootings unnerved a lot of commuters who take the train to get to and from work. Early this morning, let me just fast forward ahead. Men got into an argument on that four train when one pulled out a gun. Look, they Shot actually talk to people. I actually, uh, I actually interviewed people. Here we go. 
It's crazy to believe, man, you know? It's crazy. Police say a group of men were fighting on a four train around 12.15 a.m. when the suspect pulled out a gun and shot a 22-year-old man in the torso. Another man in his 20s was hit in the arm and elbow. Both were rushed to Harlem Hospital in stable condition. For now that this stuff is, is actually starting to happen now, it, it's crazy. You get on the train now, you don't know if you're going to get stabbed or you don't know if something like this is going to happen where unfortunately somebody's going to get shot. I mean, of course, you know, you think about it now. Many riders say they have no other alternative to get to work. Especially exactly. I have no other alternative to talk to the MTA next week. This is my only lifeline. I have important financial matters I have to talk to them about next week. Unbelievable. New York one, again, you are so full of it. You are so full of it. Sorry, but I, th th this just gets me mad. And then, this is what else they should have been covering. And believe it or not, I actually found this out from Charlton. Charlton D'Souza from Passengers United actually spread this on his Facebook page last night. Let's read this one. This is from the New York Post. and uh, AM New York didn't even have anything about it on their website. So let's just read this. And I'm sorry if the picture's a graphic. But you need to see what's going on. I don't care if I get age restricted again. I really don't. Okay, New York one. Really again. Need to reevaluate your programming. Man bloodied after brutal attack in Midtown Subway Station. A man was arrested after leaving another man bloody during a fight on a Midtown subway platform on Friday afternoon, December 3rd. The altercation between the two men broke out about 3.20 p.m. on the northbound platform of the 49th Street station at Times Square, which serves the NR trains, an MTA spokesperson said. And look at that. Look how creeped out that girl is. Look how creeped out that girl is. Look at that poor little girl. Hang on, I just need to put this in a separate tab. I'm going to read it offline later about the shooting in Michigan. I'm not going to show all the pictures, but... It says here, the victim suffered a head injury and was taken to Bellevue Hospital on a stretcher. His head was bloodied and bandaged as he was wheeled away from the scene. Photos showed. His alleged assailant was taken into custody according to the MTA in photos of the scene, so... There's obviously an ongoing investigation. You see here, look at this. This is proof that a crime happened here. And the police actually had to shut down the main turnstiles and made everybody leave from the emergency exit. Let's see. So I don't mention anything about weapons being used. That'd be a good old-fashioned fist fight. Okay, we're going to move on now. There's more subway crime that happened. I'm going to read this one. Subway creep tried to rape woman in a Queen's, stairwell, a Queen's Station stairwell. Oh boy, this happened in Jamaica. Police released video footage Friday night of a perpetrator behind a brazen attack which occurred at about 6.10 a.m. on the morning of Wednesday, December 1st at the 169th Street F train station in Jamaica. According to law enforcement sources, the creep approached the 30-year-old victim from behind as she walked up the stairwell leading, leading out to the station from the street level. Cops said he then tried to tackle the victim, then reached under her skirt and yanked down her thighs. The suspect then attempted to rape the woman but was startled after seeing a passerby approaching. The perverted perpetrator then bolted from the scene in an unknown direction. Officers from the 107 precinct and New York Transit Bureau District 20 responded to the incident. The victim refused medical attention at the scene. As shown in grainy surveillance camera footage, the attacker wore a navy blue jacket over a gray hooded sweatshirt, a, a gray baseball cap, and dark colored pants. So they probably got a good look of him. I, the only thing I wonder is, I hope this didn't happen at the exit where the bus stop for the Q30, Q31 is on Homewatch Street. Really hope it didn't happen over there.
Oh, and look at this, another subway stabbing, this time in Greenwich Village. What station did this happen at? Yep, no surprise. West 4th Street, Washington Square Park. Okay, here we go. This happened on Saturday, November 20th, which occurred about 4.59 p.m. at the West 4th Street subway station, which serves the A, B, C, D, E, F, M stations. Okay, got everything right. According to law enforcement sources, the perpetrator engaged the 22-year-old male victim as they, as a dispute as they both rode a Brooklyn-bound A train as it neared the West 4th Street stop. After they disembarked the train, the attacker pulled out a cutting instrument and stabbed a 22-year-old man in the head. He then fled the scene in foot in an unknown direction. Officers in the 6th Precinct and Transit District 2 responded to the assault. EMS brought the victim to a local hospital. Okay, Scrub's direct description is he was last seen wearing a green baseball cap, a dark-colored sweater, and black pants. Okay, so let's just take a look and see what we can pull up. This isn't really, really that clear, but looks like he has something suspicious in his pants. So there you go. I mean, nothing. Again, you're not going to hear anything about this from New York One. You're not. You're just not. And then there's this last one we're going to read before we get into more details about the suspect who killed the um, Columbia University college student and why I'm taking it very personally regarding that incident. Because we need to get into, you know, why it has a weird coincidence to another incident that happened two years ago. Okay, here we go. Graphic video shows Brute attempting to rape woman in a Brooklyn apartment building. The NYPD released disturbing video Saturday morning showing the suspect behind a violent rape attempt in Brooklyn a day earlier. Police said the attack happened at about 1.50 a.m. on the morning of December 3rd in an apartment building in the vicinity of Shore Parkway and 13th Street in Coney Island. According to law enforcement sources, the creep allegedly followed the 45-year-old woman from the subway in the location and then approached her as they walked into the lobby. Authorities said he attempted to subdue the woman, then put his hand down her pants, and then dragged her out of the vestibule. But the woman, police said, resisted the perpetrator's attack, causing him to eventually flee the scene. The video shows the attack in progress preceded by footage of the perpetrator into the nearby bodega on the morning of the assault. Okay, so officers in the 61st precinct responded to the incident. Cops said the victim sustained bruising and scratches on her buttocks for refused medical attention. Okay, the perpetrator wore a black baseball cap, dark collar jacket, and gray pants. So let's see what we got in this video. So again, they were able to find a suspect matching the description uh, in a nearby bodega surveillance video. I mean, this is a clear image, so... Cops should be able to get this guy. Still, I mean, this is disturbing. I gotta say, this woman gave a good fight. I mean, look at this video. And then look at this creep, just following her. Following her. Let's look up to see where this is. I think I know what subway station this is close by. I know Coney Island very well. Up! Ah! No surprise! No surprise. She got off the Sheep's Head Bay station. Yep. I know exactly where this is. I know exactly where this is. Yep. Zoom out. Show you exactly where this is. Not too far from the belt. You know, this is very alarming. This actually happened right nearby Coney Island Hospital. Yeah. So again, I'm very familiar with this area. Mm-hmm. So I actually have a family route family member who lives right by Nostrand Avenue. You just cannot make this stuff up. 
you just can't. This is what we have to deal with. And again, New York One's just ignoring us. We're sick and tired of them just ignoring us. It's like we don't even matter when it comes to crime. No, but if a college student gets stabbed, oh, we're going to spend three minutes covering that. All right, so let's, let's figure out if we have a suspect description. Okay, so here we go. Suspect in connection for the stabbing spree on Thursday night, killing a Columbia University graduate student, has been charged. Vincent Perkerny of West 125th Street was apprehended in suspe was apprehended in Central Park near the corner of West 104th Street and Central Park West on the evening of December 2nd as he allegedly menaced a 29-year-old man with a knife. Police stopped Bikini and took him into custody without further incident. Upon further investigation, police learned that Bikini allegedly stabbed David Gurley, 30, of West 121st Street moments earlier at about 10.54 p.m. near the corner of West 123rd Street and Amsterdam Avenue. Officers in the 26th Precinct responded to a 911 call about an assault found Gary at the location where the stab wound was abdomen. EMS rushed the victim to Mount Sinai St. Luke's where he died a short time later. So according to this, he was from Italy, and he was studying engineering and science. So very sad. I mean, this person had a lot to live for, you know? They do have, I think they had something on the website. Let's see. Let's see if they have a video of the suspect that was arrested. I know Channel 2 had a video, and I know Channel 7 did. Yeah, see that? New York 1 actually showed the, uh, the knife that was used. Look at that. See? Right here. Which, again, New York 1 actually did cover it last night. I was watching, uh... The newscast after midnight. Let me just fast forward. He was shot of unfathomable inhumanity. Police say they respond. Jerry was found with a stab. Are they going to show the suspect being arrested or not? Because Channel 7 did. taken to Mount Sinai Morningside Heights. He is expected to survive. The 27-year-old man was a tourist from Italy. Police have a 25-year-old man in custody in connection to the two stabbings. The NYPD said it found the suspect in Central Park threatening a third person with a knife. Law enforcement sources say... See, that detail was ignored by AM New York. The vigil, say they feel yeah, third person was being menaced. Oops, sorry about that. Wanted to open a separate tab. Let's go back to YouTube and take a look at CBS New York because we're going to wrap up this video in uh, just a second. CBS New York. See if we can find it. Yeah, here we go. Our team coverage moves now to the investigations and the suspect who's facing telling us that by police the suspect was escorted by police out of the 26th precinct and is facing multiple charges nypd sources identify him as vincent pinckney of washington heights they say he's a 25 year old gang member based in queens with 16 prior arrests sources tell us he was out on parole after serving four years behind bars for gang assault and he is also being considered a suspect in another non-fatal stabbing in Morningside Park on Wednesday morning, just 24 hours before he allegedly stabbed 30-year-old Davide Giri to death. Yep. So, Jound Tzu was giving specifics and a little bit more of New York 1. So, AM New York kind of missed the ball rolling here. But, then again, you see here... This is what we have to deal with time and time again from this TV station known as New York One. They constantly just keep ignoring us.
Now, why am I taking this very, very personally? You may be wondering. Because... This is why. This is exactly why. Now on CBS2 and streaming on CBSN New York, a 13-year-old boy charged in the murder of a Barnard College student has just faced a judge. 18-year-old Tessa Majors was stabbed to death in Morningside Park. Tonight. Yep. We're approaching the two-year anniversary of another college student who was stabbed literally in the same area. That's why I'm taking this very personally. Okay, so I'm going to just wrap it up here because I'm just done ranting. I mean, there is a big day of college football. I am looking forward to today. College football playoff rankings are coming out tomorrow, and I really do not want to continue on here. So you get the point with this TV station. They are just a bunch of people who don't know how to run their news department and you know New York one again it's just going to keep ignoring us and it, and it looks like it's going to keep happening until we take a stand against this TV station and say enough is enough thank you for watching